Alistar is the classic tank engage support, but this player is named Lord of Cow Time, a master Alistar top player who is somehow having success with a season 3 pick in season 12, but this is nothing like any support top laner we have seen in the past. He plays a 1v1 solo killing tower pushing tank that actually doesn't even really need to get CS. Focusing almost entirely on XP, he becomes an unkillable frontliner for his team way before any other tank can. With a cooldown reduction build, and some game breaking damage that Riot might have accidentally put in the game, Tank Alistar can even dive carries repeatedly to win fights while still being his team's main tank. Forget about Alistar being a champion with one combo with a really long cooldown, this is ability spamming burn Alistar. But first, this video is sponsored by Blockchain.com. Blockchain.com is one of the world's biggest cryptocurrency trading sites with over 82 million wallets in over 200 countries. They're a sponsor of Cloud9, but more importantly, they're approved by Chime. With Blockchain.com, it's fast and easy to sign up and get trading, also providing 24-7 live chat support, as well as a learning portal to help you if this is your first time investing. Blockchain.com allows you to easily transfer funds from other sites, and move them back if you have a bad experience. Unlike solo queue, with Blockchain.com, you're the one who's in control. Crypto is known as being super volatile, but that's not true for every coin, because Blockchain.com has something called stable coins, whose value is based on physical currency like dollars and euros. This is important because Blockchain.com are offering 16% APR exclusively to CEUR holders, the stable coin based on the value of the euro. So if you buy 25 CEUR, you could get a 10 CEUR bonus, as well as earning up to 16% on annual rewards. Click the link in the description to sign up and also get zero fees on your first trade. Our player's story with Alistar Top actually starts way back in Season 3, where he had already started playing this style. Back then, Alistar Top wasn't even off meta, in fact it was almost a common pick. With a Triforce Static Shiv build, he used AD Alistar to climb to Platinum. Nowadays, the build may have changed, but the style is weirdly similar. Even with a rework to Alistar that completely changed the champion and pushed him towards support, our player never stopped, not swapping champion or even role throughout all of the seasons. After being permabanned in Season 8, Lord of Cow Time's perspective changed. He knew he didn't want to be a toxic player who only tried to 1 vs 9 every game, and to fit with his champion, he had to change his focus to being more team oriented. After a huge amount of grinding, he hit Platinum again, and then Diamond. But it was not until the item rework and then another full season of grinding that he finally had the tools to reach for Master Tier. His story is truly about making your favourite champion in your favourite role work no matter what the odds. And on March 17th, 2022, he finally completed his promos and hit Master for the first time. But how does Alistar Top work? This lane is full of bully champions who can capitalise on any tiny mistake you make. And on the other side, Alistar is just a melee support. The main reason this pick works even in Season 12 is that he he doesn't actually rely on CS. He's not a roaming champion, but you may still notice how terrible our player's CS averages are every game. 3.7 CS a minute, 5 CS a minute, he never gets above this. But he isn't just a bronze player, CS on Alistar just isn't that important compared to most champions. A huge amount of Alistar's scaling comes specifically from getting XP. After all, he's usually a support champion, so overall he's actually a lot stronger top lane. Riot may have made a mistake with one of his abilities. It's something that could even be a coding error that makes this ability way too strong and makes his team fighting absolutely ridiculous. We'll talk about that later in the video, but for context, I have to show you his laning phase first, just so you can see how bad this champion is early on, before he becomes crazy strong and starts to break the game. At level 1, Alistar is at his weakest point. In fact, you could call him one of the worst champions in the game at level 1. He doesn't have his combo yet and is forced to take Q, which he has no set up for, so our player has to play very safe, ideally getting a few CS and using Q on the enemy to avoid damage. You don't get to use the OP part of this pick later on in the game without a bit of suffering. But then the second wave arrives, the seventh minion dies, and while you get level 2, you also gain some free health back thanks to your healing passive. You get some more CS getting level 3, you have all of your skills, and with minions dying you're suddenly back to almost full health. This healing passive is so great for sustain because all that needs to happen is for minions to die nearby. Since Alistar is usually a support, he doesn't even need to be killing them. Any
any ability he uses also counts as a stack. So doing good trades actually gains health. So you need 7 stacks to gain health, meaning roughly every 1 in a bit waves. You get a heal no matter what. This means that the health pool you have in lane is just bigger than other champions. It's very similar to Trundle with his healing passive. You can see how Alistar Top is starting to build up in power. You can take bad trades and still recover with the healing. Also having teleport as your get out of jail free card to escape a bad situation, buy some items, and come back to lane on full health. This summoner also lets you fix another one of Alistar Top's problems. Our player noticed how terrible Alistar's mana problems were in top. In support he's fine because he only uses mana during a fight, so he can AFK, save up his mana and wait for the right moment. But top lane he has to be actively participating in the 1v1 to make sure he's still getting some CS, so it's very easy to run out of mana and not even be able to protect yourself from dying. So with this early teleport back to lane, our player buys a tier, also having mana flow band, and so he begins to sack them both as fast as possible. Now he can start to be more aggressive in lane since mana isn't an issue. Alistar has surprisingly high base damage, as well as a combo that means enemies just can't return damage when you use it. Walking up with his E active lets it start stacking, then using Q to stall the enemy, auto attacking for the E stun, and then W finally to knock the enemy away and end the trade. With a few of these trades the enemy can be set up for a simple all-in combo for a 1v1 kill. Or alternatively you can do the well-known insect into your tower trick to get a kill. Yes this trick even works in high elo because surprisingly enemies don't really play against Alistar top very much. Q an enemy, walk behind them, W them into tower for extra damage, ideally stunning them with E and chasing for a kill. And if you've already killed top once, Alistar is a very low risk champion who's not going to get counter killed. Using damage on him feels like it's not doing anything, thanks to his damage reduction ultimate. It absorbs your combo, and again his high base damage is surprising, letting him collect another kill. And unlike other support top laners, he can't really be dived either because of this ult. Getting 55% damage reduction from all sources, so even two enemies normally isn't enough to kill him. Weirdly, even though he's a support champion, he still isn't going to leave top lane. This is because Alistar top isn't actually a support. Instead, he gets his first power spike, Barmy Cinder, and uses it alongside his Q to repeatedly shove the wave, meaning any time the enemy leaves lane, he gets a quick demolish proc on the enemy tower. It's pretty safe because if the enemy ever shows up, Alistar has his W to save himself from a bad 1v1. It's really weird to see him not grouping up at this point. I think it's really risky to do this, but if he's able to get a few full waves of farm and some tower plates, it really accelerates Alistar's tankiness. So there is a huge value to this risk. If his team can hold off just long enough for Alistar to do this, then it sets him up to be a super strong tank in mid game. The reason for this is Sunfire Aegis. What is usually a tank item for Alistar is also a damage item. Thanks to his 7 second ultimate duration, where he basically can't die, he can easily stack up the Sunfire Cape damage and proc it repeatedly. This fight is a great example. He has huge tankiness to absorb multiple enemies damage, but he also ends up doing over a thousand damage himself just with this one tank item. And of course this is alongside his ability damage. The thousand extra damage is just a bonus. This item synergy is perfect and since he's a solo laner he's so accelerated look how little damage an AD carry even does to him. He's already super tanky and still has damage. Then buying cooldown reduction boots he now wants to join his team and create plays. Your big advantage is your kill setup and tankiness to go wherever you want. So you can absolutely roll over enemies if your teammates follow up on your engages. As long as there's one roll on your team that's even or ahead, you can visit that lane and just dive the tower to create a game winning advantage. But now we're getting to team fights, and this is where Alistar's secret advantage we were talking about kicks in. So this player told me about a very weird thing about Alistar. His E, the trample, which is the auto attack stun, doesn't actually scale with the points that you put into the ability. The damage actually scales with levels, meaning he can focus on leveling his other abilities to maximize their damage and still get a huge burst of magic damage from this ability even when it's still level 1. The reason this matters is because the full combo of QWE can do a confusingly high amount of damage. So instead of playing as a frontline tank, he's actually more of a dive champion that can solo kill carries while also tanking multiple enemies. This could be an error or it's more likely just something that the developers don't expect to happen because he's completely designed to be a support.
support champion, but when he's taken top lane, he's getting way more resources, so this extra damage is no longer fair and shouldn't be in his kit. It's crazy he can take no damage and still kill people. This damage combined with a cooldown reduction build means that Alistar can continuously cycle his abilities for the CC and the damage. Your CC lasts for a total of 3.25 seconds, with only a 6 second cooldown on the combo, so enemies don't get much breathing room when Alistar is nearby. Since you're a top laner, it's also much easier to use your ultimate. This is because it's just not possible to get chunked out to low HP when you have 4000 health, so he can use it early on in the fight to cleanse CC and then get as much value out of it as possible, jumping into the enemy backline and staying there for the whole fight. As Alistar, the best thing for enemies to do is usually to ignore you. In support, your cooldowns are high and your damage is quite low. Usually he's just a ball of health that can't do anything. So when I watch this guy play top lane, enemies seem to do a similar thing. They ignore him even in high elo since he's just a full tank. But then the passive sunfire damage kicks in, with Alistar running through multiple people to get to the carries, burning through their health bars one by one. All of this while still not taking damage, or even being in danger of dying. Just to be clear, if he's fed he can legitimately 1 versus 5 in fights, but most of the time he still needs some of his team's damage to help finish off the fight. AD carries and squishy mid laners are easy to kill, even some supports can do it. The hard part is what you do afterwards against the bruisers. Also if you're behind, the champion's not too bad. Unlike some top laners you can still be useful, you're still tanky and you still have crowd control, just like support Alistar. But there is a big problem with this strategy, but before we get to that here's the build he used to get to master. Getting sustain for lane with Doran shield, then his boots and mythic, then into tank items, which he can choose depending on the enemy team. Eventually building his tier into Fimble Winter, an amazing item that works with all of your CC and your spammable cooldowns, making your tankiness last for even longer and extend fights. Finishing the build with a fun item, Rhyalize, so you can slow enemies and be even more annoying in fights. His runes are also all about being a tank, taking grasp in top lane. You're a tank, not an engaged champion. Glacial would be pretty useless in lane and also doesn't help you when you get into fights. To rate this build, the place we need to start is the weaknesses. Champions like Camille, as well as range champions, or split pushers, or healing champions are really good into this pick. There's a good reason that Lord of Cow Time took 320 games to get to master this season. Firstly, because he's never done it before, so it's very impressive he could raise his MMR high enough on an old account and make it all the way to master, but also because he's picking a champion that struggles early game in a role that struggles to affect the rest of the game, at least early on. This pick is reliable, as well as being simple and having the ability to suffocate enemies in team fights. For most games you end up in a hard matchup, can't really get CS or contest lane, so you're behind after laning phase. Then you show up to bot lane and there's a 5 and 0 vein ready for you, with your bot lane too busy flaming your jungler to help you win the game. It's incredibly impressive this guy managed to hit master with it, and it's great timing because this pick is probably one of the better top lane tanks in the game right now, thanks to the synergy it has with items. But it is definitely not free LP, you have to really work for every game you win, which to be fair can be more satisfying than picking an OP meta champion. If you want to see more of this dedicated player his Twitch is linked in the description. And thanks again to our sponsor for funding this content, I literally couldn't make these videos without sponsors like them, so please understand that and give them a try if you can. Thanks so much for watching.